Hello again, my name is Gerhard Oxenfeld. I'm back with a new video. If you have seen my review about the not very good but surprising EFS 24mm STM, you know that I had promised you to review the EF 35mm F2.0. You have seen my video about the 24mm STM, so you know that I have the not cheap EFS 15 to 85mm. 3.5 to 5.6 and might wonder why I don't take an average landscape photography like this with my zoom lens. Well, I think it is a good zoom lens for other users while offering a wide spread of possibilities with its full frame equivalent of 24 up to 135 millimeters. The reason to take a fixed focus along are those details whether in the middle, whether at the horizon or at the edge of the frame. This photograph is taken with an aperture of 3.2. This aperture keeps the foreground lightly unsharp, on the other hand brings this lens to its high performance. See the foreground? A bit unsharp but sharp enough to show the difference between the oak and the fern very clear. But if I wanted the foreground a bit more blurry, indeed I could use the f2.0. It is a little less sharp, but the clearly low contrast could easily be corrected in post-production. Another example, when I was out to take photos in Essen. The reason to use the fixed focus of 35mm is mostly the great difference in sharpness, as well as the straight lines free from any bulge. So, coming home, you only need to correct the high contrast because of the sunlight and simply enjoy your photographies without any compromise. By the way, I should say that the EFS 15 to 85 mm offers an f4.5 at the focal length of 35 mm. That means two and a third stops less to play with the depth of field. It was in the 1970s when so-called 35mm cameras looked like this or so, that not only Canon tried to establish a focal length of 55mm as a standard focal length for enthusiastic photographers and professionals. They failed and broke their engagement. But now I say, here it is. For anyone who uses Canon APS-C cameras, 35mm offer an equivalent of 56 millimeters at a full frame. This is another example taken in Essen, a more or less big city in the so-called Ruhrgebiet in Germany, an agglomeration of seven or eight million inhabitants. Here I did correct distortion a little bit to get parallel lines while I needed to tilt the camera upwards a little bit to take this photo. However, I did not need to correct any convex or concave diffraction. I built in these green lines to show you the plain result. Furthermore, the details are very nice and clear, shown here in 100% at 1920 to 1080 pixel. Another example of practical usage, but I want to show you later. Let me go back to Essen. I did photograph this oversight with a 60mm lens that will be the subject of a later review. Now, this way I can show you what the 35mm is at a full frame or at an APS-C camera. The roof of a big shopping center is here an unroofed parking level for automobiles. Actually on foot, it was nevertheless easy to walk up to this widely open roof and mount a tripod to take series of exposures at different apertures. Let me start with saying that there is not any vignetting at not any aperture. Of course, that should be without saying while this lens is made for full frame. However, it is not self-evident that in the sector used by the APS-C sensor this lens is free from such weaknesses just at an open aperture. Looking at the results at the left edge, this lens seems to be disappointing. Let me tell you that this is a prime example to show what depth of field really is. It will be 
a subject of another and short video. So let us now have a look at the right edge of the frame. Areas of low contrast offer their usability just at an open aperture of f2.0. We find the lens managing the high contrast of the very bright white wall excellently at an f2.8 or higher. There are best results at an f4.5 and f5.6, the best results in sharpness at f4.5. So let us take a look at other details. In the upper half we see the clinker bricks of a building at a distance of 185 meters. At a distance of 900 meters there are the regular structures of a modern building. Both we find low contrasts and at any aperture they are really good results. Nevertheless, best results surprisingly already at an f4.0. The lower half shows a weathered white building at a distance of 600 meters. We see a pylon and a high voltage line at 1600 meters. Finally, a winding tower, nowadays out of use, at a distance of 1700 meters. No doubt, in the far distance there are best results at an aperture of 4.0 and 5.6. This makes me curious. Enough reason to treat you with a detailed comparison using thirds of aperture stops. Depending on usage and necessity, the lens is good at any aperture. In my opinion, it is very good at f3.5 up to f9. It is excellent at apertures between f4.0 and f7.1. Nevertheless, the red letters on a white ground are good to check the ability to handle contrast. Here I find the best results with a clear separating at f3.2 up to f5.6. Let me end my little shooting tour through Essen with a photography only for enjoying. Here as well I did correct the distortion while I lifted the camera up with an angle of around 30 or 40 degrees. Furthermore, I did only level the extreme contrast. Using raw format only, it was no problem to level very dark and very bright sections. The cutout of 100%, again at a size of 1920 to 1080 pixel, will show you that the lens has at last nothing to do with chromatic aberrations. When I was out in the open countryside again, there was only a common ladybird to present itself on the catwalk or take refuge to the camera. But I followed to the short distance of only 24 centimeters. Another example, while the day was windy, the chamomile was not really more patient than the frantic ladybird. It called for some shots to take along a satisfying exposure. Checking the results, the ladybird was at last a little bit faster than me, but the chamomile astonishes with surprising details. The shortest focal distance of 24 cm is kind and friendly if you don't have a macro lens or did not take along. At the same time, the EF 35mm f2.0 does maintain remarkable at the short distance. So let us take a rigorous look at this discipline. I did simply photograph the wording of a law at the shortest focal distance of 24 cm. Here I do only show the 100% outcuts. I am really very surprised to find the best results in the middle at an aperture of 3.2. While the corners are very fuzzy at open apertures, I don't wonder about the sharpness rising up to f9. In post-production I built in these green lines to show the very low distortion. The not regular distortion will be a result of my negligence setting the camera not completely to the level. No doubt, a macro lens does not lose its justification where the EF 35mm f2.0 IS USM comes along. However, it is constructed to offer best results beginning at a distance of some meters ending 
at an infinite distance. The EFS 60mm macro offers a scale of 1 to 1 without any tube and is free from poorness in the shortest distance. Nevertheless, the standard lens makes an even good job at such a small thing like 10 inches of distance. But now back to practice. You know my video about the EFS 24mm STM? Then you know the biobaker Enrique Rosales. He didn't want to have an eye catcher for his selling on the weekly market and at the same time show himself inside his little bakery. Now this is a banner of 180 to 80 centimeters. The colored version I showed for a short moment at the beginning of this video was only the beginning of the process, while the banner was never meant to be colored, a part of the bread only. I used the 35mm lens as an aperture of f3.2 to get a lightly blurry background. Enrique liked to represent himself as a member of the Demeter Association. The Demeter logo is not sharp but clear enough to recognize. The printed version is a textile outdoor banner in life size. At the end, let me show you some examples of shooting against the sun. By and large, lens flares are less and low. The results of backlit or contre jour photos are mostly depending on your game with the chosen aperture and in how much and in which way the extreme light is diminished. These examples show the leaves, branches and bowels of the trees as the most important influence to the results. My summary about the Canon EF 35mm f2.0 IS USM. If you don't find a real necessity to use a very wide aperture of f1.4 or so, if you don't feel addicted to a wide open aperture of 1.4, and if you think that you won't be ashamed of using a standard lens with the widest aperture of a blaming f2.0, then this is your standard lens for your Canon APS-C camera. It is a lens made in Japan, a lens offering a good quality in lens casing and offering an excellent good quality of photographic results. And all this at an acceptable price. I'm sorry, it has become a long video again, so let me say thank you for your patience and thank you for your interest. Bye bye and see you later.